Anthem is going to fully release tomorrow, the 22nd of February, 2019. I have been playing the full game for about 45 hours and completed everything the game had to offer in about 18 of those hours. Unfortunately, digging into it for an additional 27 hours has only reinforced one simple thing for me. Anthem is a thoroughly disappointing, bland mess. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start from the beginning. In Anthem, you take the star role as the freelancer. This essentially means that you have a mech and you're not a cop. And your role is extremely unclear. The story of the game jumps back and forth between you being a mercenary who handles all of the world's ancient magic shaper relic things, and then also pretty heavy-handedly telling you that freelancers are hated after the events of the tutorial for some reason. This setup is strange because everyone in Fort Tarsus, which is the main hub of the game, seems to be completely incapable of treating you as anything other than the only one who can get anything done around here. This type of inconsistency is at least consistent throughout Anthem's meandering shell of a plot as you go through sequences of desperately needing items of great importance for your characters to move forward, only for the game to suddenly rewrite its rules and those things never mattered, congrats on doing them. If it weren't enough that the story changes its rules on a dime, the characters that you interact with in the story are all very predictable cookie cutters. You've got character that will obviously betray you, and the snarky one, the snarky one making up about 90% of the game's entire character roster. Those are your baseline. And then you have your two main supporting characters, Haluk and Faye, who I would describe as miscut cookies? Let's only talk about Haluk in this review, as the characterization that is strange with Faye is a little bit more spoiler heavy, and I'm not going to include any major spoilers here in the story, uh, unless they're absolutely necessary. Haluk appears to be the leader of your group during the tutorial and you save his life. And then, after his reintroduction to the story, he begrudgingly helps you move the story forward as an admittedly pretty good kind of grumpy old man freelancer past his prime type character that is honestly pretty nice. Didn't mind him for a large part of the game. This would be all fine, but later on in the game, his personality is suddenly completely and instantly replaced with that of a mentor character that seems to think that he's been mentoring you the entire time, even though that's definitely not been the case. And the old way that he did act is never addressed again, and he never goes back to his old personality. The characters just shift around to whatever seems to be needed by the writers instead of having a meaningful character arc where characters actually go through change that makes any sense. And this ends up just making the cutscenes feel extremely hollow and more for show than you can actually see a character progress because they're just going to change the drop of a hat. This is all, of course, without talking about the game's main villain known as Gaul, who wants the power of the Traveler for himself and will kill anyone that gets in his way in his efforts to obtain ultimate power. Wait, wait, sorry. Let's try that again. This is all without talking about the game's main villain, the Monitor, who wants the power of the Anthem of Creation for himself and will kill anyone that gets in his way in his efforts to obtain ultimate power. If this bad joke wasn't enough to tell, he's a milk toast retread of villains like Gaul and Thanos, only considerably less interesting and with way less meaningful screen time to make him anything more than generic evil man, which is truly unfortunate as he probably has the best character design out of anyone in the entire game. And you might be saying, well, you can't expect it to be a good story game, it's a co-op looter shooter, and to that I absolutely agree, and I didn't expect to care much for the story, even from Bioware, who have, you know, classically been known to write good and interesting stories. What I wanted were quality objectives, enemies, and loot, but Anthem seems to be unable to deliver on any of these fronts. The bulk of objectives throughout the game consist of only three things. Kill the enemies, which is, of course, as to be expected, you gotta kill the guys in your looter shooter. And then we have sit in this area and watch a bar fill. Very, very unfortunate in a game where movement is usually going to be so important. And then our third objective is collect a bunch of things and bring them to a spot. This is broken up only by two or three very simple puzzle encounters that are only going to be in the story and are never present anywhere in the end game of the game. Simple objective structure is something that people have gotten used to though in looter shooters. So let's talk more about the very pressing issue that is that the combat just isn't good. It's just not good enough, and it doesn't feel good. Enemies are incredibly limited in terms of their variety. They're really only being like seven to ten enemy types in total across the entire game, and 
all of them are outdated or extremely basic, such as the Ash Titans you will constantly encounter throughout the game's story that have the wait for the weak point gameplay that we might have expected from a game four years ago. This is incredibly bland, and it just makes missions feel like a slog. That's not the end of problems just with enemies, though. They are also generally unresponsive bullet sponges and buggy to the point that enemies often just teleport around or vanish while you're not fighting them or while you are fighting them in some cases. The enemies being this way just makes the weapons feel even more useless. I have yet to find a single weapon that is satisfying to use in general combat, and it's certainly not for lack of trying, as I've spent 18 to 20 hours farming the game's Grandmaster endgame levels where you can get masterwork and legendary items. The weapons all feel exactly the same from beginning to end, and it's not of much help to the problem that the only reliable places to get loot are the three strongholds of the game, one of which is just a redo of the game's final mission. These missions don't change in any interesting way at higher difficulty levels. The enemy health goes up, the enemy damage goes up, end of story. There are no new mechanics or enemy tactics to be found by pushing through the game's higher difficulties if you are even able to do so with the absurd amounts of enemy scaling. A great example of this is that I have a bugged level 1 railgun on the Colossus that does about 60,000 damage instead of the around 10,000 masterwork railguns do. Even with the bug allowing me to do many times the damage I should be able to do, the enemies just soak it all up, making weapons that are clearly above the game's intended power level even feel weak. Even with all of this, the game is not without some positives that no doubt the angry comments that are already below this video will not acknowledge. The visual customization of each javelin is fantastic, and honestly, there are a lot of games that I wish had this level of customization. You can change the material, the wear and tear, the color with a color wheel. So, so many things can be customized on a javelin and how it looks. It is extremely refreshing to have this very, very high level of customization. And I truly do love, this, love the style of the world and the javelins as a whole. These things are good on their own, but art can't carry the whole game. I also think that the way that abilities interact in that kind of classic Mass Effect comboing abilities together to get big effects way works really well, and it would be very fun if you had worthwhile enemies to use it on. Blight also continues to feel pretty cool, even though I'm 45 hours into this game, so that's definitely a positive, though I may be in the minority there, as I was one of the few people during the beta that didn't have a problem with the way that Flight controls. However, this all brings us to the end of this video, and that is that even with the few positive points that are in this game, and how much I would love for it to be good or for there to be some shining star at the end of the road, the game is simply not worth playing or paying for right now, and I'd give it like a 4 out of 10 in its current state. I hope you guys have enjoyed my kind of first review video. Um, there may be more in the future if you guys enjoy this. Um, and I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments so that I can improve or, or whatnot. It's kind of a different thing for me. But yeah, later all.